It's not good. I recently bought a pair of Sony MDR7506 wired headphones for both mixing audio as well as for monitoring while I'm shooting video. The problem is, is that these headphones come with a hardwired spring coil cable. These, these are the Sony MDR headphones that I bought. You see this little whip on the end here? This is what we're gonna install. And I'll show you later why it's really cool. I'm not afraid to mod. So why corded headphones instead of wireless? That, my friend, is a good question. These are my top five reasons why corded headphones are just better for professional applications. Corded headphones are less expensive. Sony headphones can be picked up for less than a hundred bucks. Corded headphones have less electronic components, which makes them easier to fix and less likely to end up in the trash. Less components means that corded headphones are usually lighter. Might not be a ton lighter, but if you're wearing them all day on your head, lighter is always better. Latency is not an issue with corded headphones. That's a big reason. Can't say the same for Bluetooth. You might get latency. And finally, the big, the big one to me is you don't need to worry about a Bluetooth connection issue. I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about frequency response because honestly, I'm not an audio expert. I did a little bit of research and I think it's necessary to address why you'd want to choose a set of headphones that doesn't inject unnecessary bass, treble, or other effects. What you really want is a set of headphones with a flat frequency response. I've also seen it referred to as a neutral frequency response, but we'll call it flat. Let's look at this blank frequency response graph with sound pressure level, or SPL, on the y-axis, and frequency from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz on the x-axis. Notice that the frequency is broken up into bass, mid, and treble ranges. We'll add our frequency response target. This is a flat response line set at 90 dp SPL. Basically, the headphones in the following charts were tested with this target. So a 90 dB amplitude signal at 20 Hertz sent to the headphones should register very close to the line and so on through the frequencies up to 20,000 Hertz. Now let's overlay the Sony MDR7506 headphones versus the Apple AirPods. And you'll see that the AirPods have been tuned in the bass, high mid, and high treble frequencies. They aren't nearly as flat as the Sony headphones which makes them less desirable for monitoring and mixing audio. Now you may be thinking that neither the Sony nor the AirPods are returning a perfectly flat response. And this is because there's another factor at play here, the Harman target. The Harman target was developed by Harman Research to best identify what kind of tuning in headphones people preferred on average, and it has become a standard target for headphones used in a professional setting. Notice how the Sony headphones are much closer to the Harman target than the AirPods. Not bad for a $90 set of headphones. But you may be wondering, what does the frequency response look like on a set of $1,500 headphones? I present to you the Sennheiser HD 800S headphones. Are the Sennheisers worth 16 times the price of the Sonys? This is where I'm out of my depth again. So if you'd like to drop a comment on what I'm seeing here, I'd like to know more. If you'd like to know even more about frequency response and how it's measured in headphones, check out the video by ratings.com linked here. Before we get to the fun part, which is ripping the headphones apart, let's start by looking at the different types of jacks you'll find on headphones, just so we're all speaking the same language. In all three types of jacks, T stands for tip, R is ring, and S is sleeve. 
The TS type of jack is the most basic. The tip carries the audio data and the sleeve is the ground. Since the audio is handled through only one connection, the TS type jack is mono. The TRS type is what we're talking about today. The tip carries the left audio, the ring carries the right audio, and the sleeve is the ground. And since the audio is transmitted through two different connections, the TRS jack is stereo. Finally, we have the TRRS type jack, and it carries left audio on the tip, right audio on the first ring, ground on the second ring, and a microphone signal on the sleeve. Let's remove that freaking spring coil. Next, remove the ear pads so you can access the screws holding the ear cups together. It helps to have a good Phillips screwdriver specifically made for electronics. I use the iFixit ProTech Toolkit, and you can find a link in the description. Now open the ear cup and remove the old TRS cable. Remove all the existing wiring from the ear cup by touching a hot soldering iron on each connection. You can use a simple standalone soldering iron, which you can pick up for 20 bucks to around 100, or you can get a soldering rework station, which has a soldering iron, heat nozzle for shrink tubing, and a DC power supply. Links to both are in the description. We will be replacing the old TRS cable with this short female to bare wire TRS cable. To make things easier, I'll refer to this replacement cable as the whip from now on. Compare the whip with the old TRS cable and remove the same amount of sleeve. Inside the sleeve, you may find stress relief strings. You can just cut these off and trim all the wires to the same length. You should test for continuity, and continuity is a way to determine if there's a complete path of current flow in a wire and how much resistance is in that flow. If you'd like to know more about electronics, check out the engineering mindset here on YouTube. Anyway, let's do some testing. So first, set your multimeter to continuity, which looks like a Wi-Fi signal on its side. It can also look like this, depending on your multimeter. I picked up this multimeter on Amazon for 50 bucks. On the whip, we just need to figure out which wire connects to the tip section, and this will be the left audio signal. We can do this by attaching the whip to a TRS cable with two male ends. Next, touch the tip of the jack and one of the wires on the whip. Whichever wire indicates continuity is the connection for the left audio signal. On this whip, the red wire is the left audio signal, which means that the white wire is the right audio signal. I did a little research to see if there's a standard for wire colors in TRS cables. I discovered that there is no standard, which makes Continuity testing a must. Okay, so after you've figured out which wires in the whip are left and which are right, it's time to reassemble the headphones and solder. Tin the ends of the wires. Tinning is simple. Touch your iron and some solder on the end of the wire and solder will draw into the wire. Tinning will ensure that stranded wires like the ones found in TRS cables make a solid contact when we attach them to the speaker. Start by routing the whip back through the headphones in the same way that the coiled cable was removed. Now with the whip in place, solder each wire in place. I made an incorrect assumption that the red wire of the whip would go to the spot where I removed the old red wire, leaving the white wire of the whip to be soldered into the green location. It only makes sense, right? Red to red? Well, it's not right. I didn't figure this out until later when I tested the headphones. This mistake won't damage the headphones, but it does make for a very disorienting experience when combined with visuals. Sound that's supposed to be coming from the left is in your right ear and vice versa. Before you completely reassemble the headphones, test them by plugging them into your computer or other sound device with a TRS connection. To make my headphones even cooler, 
I decided to upgrade to these teal ear cups from Brainwaves because they match the teal on the side of the headphones. Aren't these much better? I think they are. Now I can put these on my headphone holder without a huge spring coil hanging down on the floor. When I need to use these headphones, I can keep separate cables that are appropriate for the task. For example, if I'm at my desk, I can use a cable that's neatly routed to my Focusrite Scarlet. I've been using this heavy, four-foot braided cable from HiFind, and I love it because it winds up into a kink-free loop on my desk. If I'm using the headphones to monitor sound while shooting video, I use a four-foot lightweight cable from Anchor. It's just the right length, and it's also kink-free.